Hey guys, I'm Bob, and today I'm going to be unboxing and assembling my Xmark seated calf raise machine. I researched uh, a bunch of different seated calf raise machines um, at the low to mid level price range, and I think this one, for everything that I've looked into, uh, this is the best value that I think I could come up with. Um, it is a small footprint. It only comes out 46 inches from the wall, uh, which is great. I don't want it to take up half of my, my workout area. Um, it is made for Olympic plates, which I have plenty of, which is awesome. Uh, it's well built. And uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to unbox it and assemble it. And at some point later on in a few weeks, I'll do a review of this same Xmark seated calf raise machine. But based on my research, I think it's the best seated calf raise machine for a home gym. And that's what I have here in my shed. So it's a shed gym. But um, so let's, uh, let's unbox it and assemble it and see how long it takes me. So the other box is just for protection, it appears. Have an issue with the order before returning a leading feedback call. Number. I'm just going to try to take everything out. This looks like the seat right here. Up here. Okay, guys, so I have everything laid out out of their packages and on the floor of my uh, shed workout area. And um, this is all the hardware. It does come with one wrench. I guess I could use that, but, and it looks like an Allen wrench as well. Open end wrench and an Allen wrench, but I'll probably end up using my socket set, but we'll see. So the first step is attaching this piece to this piece here which is where your feet are placed. And so I just used um, two of these cap screws. I call them cap screws, they look like bolts to me. Um, and a washer on either side. So one on this side and one on the other side. I end up using a 16 millimeter socket set for the lock nut. And that seemed to work fine. And I had to use kind of like a this is, I have a set of like Allen mentions and uh, this is a size that fits into the end of the, what they call a cap screw. So, but this is solid right now. So the next step is attaching the front base, call it number three, to the cross base, which is the bottom frame. And um, I'm gonna use the exact same uh, screws cap screws they call them um, just line up the holes and the diagram actually shows how they'll be assembled right here and so you're just gonna come from this actually has the X mark um, decal on it and so that'll be facing up okay so I'm just gonna run a washer through the bolt Put it here, do the same on this side, put it through here, and then we just have to kind of snake this actually, like that. Then I gotta take another washer and put it on the other side, and a washer and put it on the other side, then take the the lock nut. It's a um, nylon lock nut, so the nylon goes towards the back. And the nylon will allow it to lock on so that it doesn't come loose. 
I'm just going to hand tighten those and take the same kind of Allen wrench. Probably not exactly called an Allen wrench because it's not an L, but I'm going to take my see this socket do one same thing on the other side holding it in place that's good so that's solid all right now for step two we're attaching the swing frame which is this it's a probably the biggest piece of metal in the box um, you're going to place it right in here you're taking this long bolt which is let me just double, double check button head cap screw this is there's only one of these and we're just going to This appears to be about six inches long. So we're gonna have two washers, one on either side. You're just, just gonna line this up. Slide a washer down into the screw. Gonna make sure this there's a little sleeve inside that kind of is loose. Gonna run the screw through that hole, just like a tunnel. Just gotta get it lined up. It is lined up. And now I'm just gonna take a, another washer on the other side and my lock nut and I'm going to use the same kind of allen wrench the end of the cap screw to hold it in place while I tighten bolt. Tighten the nut. Okay, so that's a um, swing bar. See how it pivots? That's pretty cool. Hopefully you can see most of this. This is basically a video to help you kind of get started uh, with assembling. So now it says attach the stopper frame to the cross brace. Uh, stopper frame is number five, which is this guy. This guy here. So I'm going to cut off they have a nylon kind of strap so that the there's a little pivoting sleeve inside so that doesn't fall out. So you got to be careful when you take off the nylon that this this piece you can see it comes out. This one is not as loose as the other one. So so this is going to be attached This is attaching. If you want to move it over here, this is how you will move the, the weights and this is how you're going to kind of pivot and take them off so you can actually do the, the exercise. So this has another 
Just gonna grab another washer right here and fish it in through this side. Just have to lift it slightly. And now it's through the other side. Let's put the washer on the other side. So basically cap screws with washers on either side. And we need to get, once again, the Allen type wrench and the socket set. And just tighten it up. That's good. So this looks pretty good. This pivots, which is what you want it to do, so that you can actually do your exercise. Next thing you want to do is to attach, they call it the adjustable slide. And the way to do that is to attach it like this. There are three holes right here where this particular um, kind of pin will be able to insert into these three holes depending upon your, your height. So this just goes in like this. You want to lift up on the pin and you can actually go all the way over to here and so it, it just dropped into one of those holes so that's basically all there is to that okay we're getting close so now we have the weight holder right here and this is actually looks like it's for the one inch but there are um, attachments for the uh, for the Olympic weights to fit into. So this is called the... So attach the weight holder, number nine, to the swing frame. Use number four, which is this one, using one M1070 button head cap screw and two flat washers. So we have one of these left. And we have washers, and we have a lock nut left. So we're already done with our lock nuts, which is cool. Um, so let's see how they want us to actually attach this. I don't think it matters which direction the head of the screw goes. So I'm just gonna do it from here. Help to have a washer on it. Just slides right through. There's a washer. And it's going to be a tight fit to get the. Hmm. That'd be interesting. To tighten it with my socket set because it's. Oh, yeah. It'll get in there just barely. And I'm just going to use my Allen wrench to hold the top and just tighten it. So we're, we're getting there. The other assembly, the rest of the assembly looks like it's, um, it does move a little bit. I'm tightening slightly. There we go, that's tight. All right, so we're still on step two, but there's not too many pieces left to attach. Now it says attach two spring clips, number 12, or two adapters, number 39, to the weight holder. And we have spring clips.
We have spring clips here. I'm not sure what we're doing with these, but uh, we'll find out. But we got to put these on. I know that. These are the adapters for for the Olympic weights. These go on like this. I'm not sure what the spring clips are for, to be honest. There is a set screw for each of these adapters that I assume we have to tighten down. One complaint I've heard on the internet is that these adapters are a little bit long and they do appear pretty long. You could actually have them cut or, you know, by, by someone who can do that easily. Um, I do want to attach two spring clips or two adapters. Oh, okay. So I'm using the two adapters to the weight holder. Insert the adjustable pad frame into the adjustable slide. I guess I have to, I definitely have to tighten down the set screws. And I was given an Allen wrench right here. So it doesn't tell me to do this, but I don't know how else these are going to stay on. So that's tight. This is a, an Allen wrench they, they supplied with the, with the hardware. Okay, so that's, those are nice and tight. Okay, so at the end of step two, there's insert the adjustable pad frame number seven into the adjustable slide number six. So that's this piece right here. And so we're just going to place that, pull out, place the right way, so pull out this, and you can just pop it back in. Hey guys, I noticed that um, during the editing of the video that this piece here, uh, when I placed it into this section, it was actually out of the view of the camera. So I just wanted to show you how this works. It's got uh, five different holes and there's a pin right here that pulls back. You're just going to place the, um, the piece into this hole and pull back the pin and then just pop it in. And then you can adjust it up and down depending upon your height. So that's basically how this piece fits in. So that's the last step in step two. So now on to step three, which is basically just the uh, seat pads. Um, attach the seat pad number 26 to the swing frame. They give a bunch of these Oh, look at this. There is another um, Allen wrench in here, and that probably would have fit the cap screws. Let's just check. Yeah, it did. So that's good that they, they actually supplied you with a, a couple of Allen wrenches that you need for assembly. So I'll, I'll actually keep that. And I'm going to put the seat. All we got here is just a very well made seat. And we're just going to put this. Let me move this down so you can actually see what I'm doing. So they also want us to use a uh, couple of washers. I'm going to do that. Get a couple of washers. 
here's the seat. Make sure these line up. All I'm doing is grabbing a wash washer and trying to line up the seat with it's threaded in the seat. All right. That one's going to be in. Just want to make sure I line up this one before I tighten them both down. Hopefully they line up. Yeah. I think it's good. The only way to tighten these down is with the Allen wrench. The one that I didn't see earlier, I was using my own. So this is a nice, well-cushioned seat. And let me just tighten this down. This is, everything's threaded here, so you don't need to use a socket set. Just use the Allen wrench to tighten it into the seat. That's good. Same here. Okay, so that's on. Now there are these knee pads here. Okay, I moved the camera up a little closer so that you can actually see how this final piece, I was wondering what these were for. And these are for attaching the knee pads. So what you wanna do is they have these brackets right here. And they're just going to go just like that. Another one goes just like that on either side. And then you take you take a one of these little screws and they have the exact right amount of screws and washers in the uh, in the box. So that's good. So I'm just going to take that off for a second. So it probably makes sense to put the washer on first, put the washer on here, just so I can get it started. So I'm going to just place this under here, put the screw in, and screw down. Let me do one on the other side so that I can secure the knee pad here. And then do the other ones. Okay, let me grab the Allen wrench that I just recently found. I was using my own. I'm just going to run this. could use my portable screwdriver. A portable drill, I should say, but this is quick enough. So you're just going to do this on both sides. I'll grab the other other ones. Pretty straightforward. So one side is on. I just had to secure the four uh, screws or bolts. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side with these brackets.
Okay. It's a little wobbly. Let's see. Move this. It's not wobbly when you tighten it down. So that's great. This you can adjust is um one, two, three, four, five different holes to adjust for the height. So depending upon how tall you are, you want to make sure you get it in the right spot. This might be good for me. I think maybe just one up. Yeah. I like it. Let me just move back the camera so I can show you the final product. So, um, these little spring clamps are for if you didn't want to use the Olympic uh, sleeves, which I guess it's a good thing. It's, you can use a, it using, uh, if you only have one inch hole plates, but I have a bunch of uh, over 300 pounds of, um, of Olympic weights. So went through all of the, all of the hardware, which is great. Um, so they did supply me with everything and this is an open end wrench that I didn't use I use end up using my socket set my socket wrench so rid of that let me just do a quick demonstration uh, just put on 25s for now one thing that did, people did complain about was the fact that these these sleeves are almost too long and I might tend to agree with them, but it's not enough reason not to buy this product, in my mind, because this was the one that appeared to be the best built. So I'm just gonna put a couple of 25s on, so 50. Uh, there's like a three to one ratio that, that uh, a seated calf raise will work under. So if you have 50 pounds over here, it's really like using uh, feeling like 150 pounds on your calves. So I'll just when you lift up this swings out of the way and then you can do your calf raises. I do like it and the, you have a post here to hold on to. I don't know if you can see that. So when you're done you just put it right there. So I like it so far. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the unboxing and assembly and I will review this this um, seated calf raise machine um, after I've used it for you know a few weeks. I don't think you want to jump in and review something um, right off the bat uh, until you've gotten used to using it and maybe come up with something that you do don't like about the machine I say first off pretty happy with the uh, with how it's working um, yeah I love it um, but I hope you enjoyed watching this assembly I know it wasn't perfect but hopefully it'll help anyone else who buys this X mark uh, seated calf raise machine um, but anyway, we will talk to you next time.